Welcome back to New Rock Stars. Did the Deadpool and Wolverine trailer omit a close up of Hugh Jackman Wolverine because they're actually planning on more Wolverine variants in this movie and they didn't want to give us any clues? How many Logans can fit in a Deadpool? I'm going to reveal what big mistake that I made in this week's Deadpool content. The answer to the truth okay. will get us to the truth. It's early. This is a sneak peek. We're gonna look ahead to the week of fandom. And one week later, we are still buzzing about the Deadpool trailer. I'm Eric Voss here with Jessica Clemens, co-host. Hi, I'm here and I'm wearing a lot of merch. Oh, you are? I'm mm. sorry, I couldn't hear you under that break room bucket hat, that break room hoodie. It looks great. New break room merch available at nerdriot.shop. What am I wearing? A, a, a hoodie for a improv a dead, theater? A dead theater. <laughs> a theater that no longer exists? <laughs> hey, we're recreating it here at New Rock Stars, one employee at a time. So much happened this week. We're still just focusing on Deadpool. We could talk about Fantastic Four. We could talk about Madam Web. We could talk about Godzilla X Kong. A lot of stuff happened this week. Uh, I'm surprised that Disney didn't throw an acolyte trailer at us. Oh, that'd be crazy. It seemed like they were just trying to drown Madam Web as much as they could with, with news Which from their own studio. Which is rude. That's like beating a dead horse. Uh, I know. Not, not, that, not saying that it's a dead horse, but it's, we get it. You guys drop three things basically in one week and Madam Web's like, well, here we come. It's one horse, one trot on the way to the glue factory. <laughs> no. We'll see what happens when the numbers come in later today. We talked a lot about Deadpool. I think one thing that we just kind of missed from the fact that the title of the movie is Deadpool and Wolverine is that this is going to be as much a Wolverine movie as it is a Deadpool movie. Yeah, 100%. They 100%. share the title. They share the title. I think in our heads, we're still calling it Deadpool 3, but let's talk about the Wolverine half of this equation. I got to confess, the biggest thing that I got wrong in the trailer breakdown is the fact that the snowy forest that he's mm -hmm. fighting the TVA minute and then it's not the forest of Sokovia. Mm -hmm. It's the forest at the Canadian border in 2017 Logan. It's the death site of Wolverine. That overturned tree that Wade is hiding behind, that overturned truck in the background, that's the exact same truck that was uh, in the final battle when they're chasing down all those uh, mutant, mutant kids escapees through the woods. So it's gonna revisit the 2017 Logan film and I think it's important to talk about this because that almost seems to violate like a sacred promise that Ryan Reynolds seemed to be making but I think we gotta go back and look at exactly what he said because he said that we're not gonna touch Logan's death. We're not gonna like retcon it or change it. But I think by saying that, it's almost gonna be like a jokey, hands off, hands off, hands off, don't touch it. Um, because like anytime Deadpool tries to change it, cosmic forces may yeah. stop him from doing that. It could be an event that has to happen that he always dies. So it's like, even if he does touch it and come back out of it, it just never happened. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope Ryan Reynolds, not. well, he is kind of comically deep that I was like, he probably is thinking like that. Like we're not touching the death because we physically can't. Yeah. <laughs> like it just won't happen. Yeah, it kind of seems like we're gonna get some Doctor Strange jokes here where, you know, there's an episode of What If where he's unable to save Kristen yeah. Palmer. Like, her death was, uh, you can never bypass it. I think Logan's death in that moment is kind of like a, a nexus mm -hmm. moment um, that you can never change. An absolute point is the term yeah, that was used in that point. What If episode. Um, but, like, I, I think it's gonna be so sacred. So the way he's gonna try to avert it is just by trying to find some version of Wolverine that he can mm -hmm. still be friends with and hang on to. So I wanna talk about some of the other alternate Wolverines that we saw uh -huh. um, in casting reports, in fan rumors. And I think there are potentially five other Wolverines that this movie could throw at us beyond Hugh Jackman. Okay. Let's start with the first one. This is actually who they wanted for Wolverine before Hugh Jackman and the reason Hugh Jackman got the role, Russell Crowe. So Russell Crowe is an Australian actor in the late 90s. He was like the it guy. It was like they ended up putting him in Gladiator. He was like a huge star at the aughts. But that year, the reason why he did Gladiator is because he turned down X-Men. Uh, and he's like, but I have an Australian friend who's a stage actor. You should look at this guy, Hugh Jackman. And they got in Hugh Jackman. And Hugh Jackman was like unknown. And yeah, was I was like, did we not know Hugh Jackman until he was Wolverine? <laughs> not at all. He was a, a stage actor. He had been in some stuff, but he's mostly okay. an Australian actor. And he had appeared, I think his highest profile role was as Curly in the 2000 revival. Or no, it was earlier than that. Um, I think he was, I don't know, if, that's interesting, I should have talked to Brandon. He was in Oklahoma, the London re revival of oh. Oklahoma and he gave an amazing performance. I don't know if that came out after he was cast for Wolverine, but that's the type of roles he was doing okay. at the time. Okay. Um, so we already saw Russell Crowe as Zeus in the MCU. Do you think we could see Russell Crowe as another Wolverine? I think that would be fun, especially if they're friends. It seems like this movie, because uh, Ryan Reynolds and uh, Hugh Jackman are friends, and 
how we assume like Blake Lively might show up and all these other people that are just friends of the family are showing up, it would give way to see Russell Crowe show up and it'd be kind of funny because he is a slightly like off version of Hugh Jackman with yeah. the beard. So it's like, yeah, it'll be a little cameo. That would be that would have been insane. I mean, we at, at that point we're definitely getting a two four six yes, yes. oh one two these, four six oh one because they were both in the 2012 Les yes. Mis movie yes. as like these opposing figures, and we know Ryan Reynolds loves to make fun yep. of a way yep. that yep. or yep. makes yep. fun of Logan because on the Deadpool two crayon map he, he labeled Wolverine as two four six oh one, and like I wonder if that's gonna be like the TVA designation of his number as prisoner two four six oh one. I mean, God dang it! If they keep going, if he's going. To to different realities to go find different Logans and one Logan is literally just a Broadway, a Broadway star. And then there's Russell Crowe that's also, or maybe he is Russell Crowe. I ask you how you are, you need to say that you're fine. Will Russell Crowe show up in this movie? The hard part is I could see it just because so many friends of friends are coming into this movie. Yeah, it like the one of the leaked possible titles was Deadpool and Friends. And I think the reason why that sounded plausible is that this movie just really feels like it's Ryan Reynolds, Hugh Jackman and Sean Levy in anybody who's yes. on their phone contact list that they've talked to in the past six months. Mm -hmm. And I think the movie's gonna be better off for it. Yeah. We should talk about X-23, Daphne Keene as Laura from Logan. I think the fact that this scene is gonna be set in this location, I'm at 80% now that we're gonna see Daphne Keene in this movie. Uh, just because they're they're going back to those events, I think she's gonna be the one protecting the grave site. Like anytime uh, Deadpool oh, tries to get there, think? she's gonna be up in the trees yeah. and she's gonna swoop down and go, yeah! And then disappear back up in the trees. He's gonna be like, the hell is going on? Like a predator or like yeah. the predator. Like um, the predator. that would be kind of fun. That'd be fun. We should see her, but isn't she in is she in the acolyte? They're done shooting. Daphne Keen, yeah, she's taking on other roles, but like, I mean, if Taylor I was just trying to can make, find time, that's to be in that this, is also true. If you give and at, at this point now, seeing how big that trailer did, everyone's like, you know what? I should make time for this. <laughs> like it is gonna time. be big. They're all on the phones with their agents. They're like, please get me on Ryan Reynolds' phone line. <laughs> I need to be in this movie. Daphne Keen showing up is I would that would be really fun to see her fight Deadpool and Deadpool can't get her. And then it's just like, okay, I'm done with this. I'm done with this universe. We're leaving this one. I think like of the different Wolverine variants we're talking about, she might be the likeliest mm -hmm. um, in terms of like the actor we know playing them. But we are also pretty certain that the patch Wolverine that we yeah. see in the trailer is not Hugh Jackman. And we just did a bit of forensic mm -hmm. analysis on the body shape of the actor sitting forensic away Forensic analysis? Yeah, you know, you just look at like the curve of the, of the neckline <laughs> and the shoulders and then you imagine what's down there and it's like, man, is something weighing him down in that seat or does he have a spring in his step? And Taryn Edgerton and Daniel Radcliffe have different body shapes generally, but Daniel Radcliffe, people have been sharing a picture. This guy's gotten big. He's been working I need out. to see, I need proof of that. Bring up the picture. <laughs> Bring up the picture. Whoa, whoa, whoa! No, that's a big boy. That's a big boy. So it could be him in the seat. I just think in terms of like the shoulder shape, Taron Edgerton just wears a suit differently than Daniel Radcliffe does. And people did talk about wanting Daniel Radcliffe to be Wolverine mm -hmm. at one point. So I could see that coming into play just as a joke to a bit to the people online. Uh, is he friends with Hugh Jack? Oh, well, they had to cross paths in Tony's. At, at the, the Tony's? Tony's at the Tonys, they absolutely probably did a dance number together at right. one point. I'm trying well, to think. Yeah, Hugh Jackman was in The Boy From Oz. Um, Daniel Radcliffe was uh, How to Succeed in Business Without Knowing. Uh -huh. And he did perform at the Tonys doing that song. He did. I think Hugh Jackman is at the Tonys every year. Yeah. He may not be <laughs> hosting the Tonys or be nominated for anything, but he's just got a seat reserved for him. It's, this is my yeah, Tonys. The, the Jackman bucket. And he, has, he gets Jackman it every time. Bucket. Um, yeah. Okay, that would be fun. I would see that one more than Taron Egerton. Was, was, remember when Taron was like, I was on the phone with Marvel, was it for like- I don't know if it was like, for this. I think yeah. he was probably brought in for meetings along with a lot of different people. Yeah, right. And, but I think the reason why I think he's on our focus list is because uh, Taron Egerton and Daniel Radcliffe were just one of these, the way John Krasinski was speculated to be Reed Richards, the way these guys were speculated yeah. to be Wolverine. And I think Ryan Reynolds is going to play into that. Yeah, 100%. I, he saw that happen, and I think he's going to be making the same choice here. I think movies like this are some of the few opportunities Marvel has to pay homage to fans who yeah, wanted 100%. that. Yeah, 100%. And I think they're gonna try to run through everybody on the list um, just to disappoint people. <laughs> now, I, but I think what was disappointing about Reed Richards as uh, John Krasinski, he got killed off too soon, but I think 
what we're going to see in the MCU is we're going to see Krasinski come back as part of a council of reeds. I think that's yeah. a no brainer. Um, so I think that's why Marvel would be okay with bringing in other fan cast hopefuls because they know that just because they had a violent death doesn't mean they can't come back through the multiverse. Um, if it's that fun. So that's what they're going to do here. I think if they permanently plan on killing off John Krasinski in Multiverse of Madness, they wouldn't dare bring in these other fan casts because they know how sad that made people. Yeah, that would be wild. Um, yeah, I think for whatever reason, just the resurgence of the Kingsman um, franchise just makes me think that Taron Egerton's value right now is just a bit hotter than Daniel Radcliffe's is. People would be more excited to see Edgerton than Radcliffe, even though Radcliffe is like more beloved among like you Harry think? Potter fans. Yeah. Well, that, that is true. And that's, that's yeah, because Taron Egerton is keeping up uh, not saying that Daniel Radcliffe isn't. Right. It's just that Taron Edgerton is doing the Kingsman. Um, he was nominated, I think, for the the Academy Award for Elton John's biopic, and he's still also dancing and singing and sing. Uh, he's still that gorilla and sing. And sing is always getting re like a new movie every damn year. So Taron Edgerton is literally dancing around Hollywood for a while. Are we talking about like a musical theater pipeline? The we MCU? are. We are. And I I hate that I we keep bringing it back to it because of Wicked, but <gasps> de genuinely. Taron Edgerton literally is in Sing and he plays Ellen John in the biopic. He's not like the best singer, but he does love singing and he can keep a note very well. Yeah. Uh, and Daniel Radcliffe is just so tiny, he can dance, he's nimble. Yeah, Taron um, Edgerton's no Russell Crowe, I think we can admit that. Oh my God, <laughs> keep Russell Crowe away from a microphone at all times, and I said it. Um, Stars and the multitude, dare to be counted. The thing is, Weep. that is that. That, what you guys saw, was actually the performance he gave. Mm -hmm. That was spot on. He's a singer in a band. Like, I think he has a background mm -hmm. singing. It's just, Javert is no, not that. that's not that. Yeah, it's people not. can have voices for different things. It's not for that role. That role was not okay. Now, we said that, like, Daniel Radcliffe's star value is not as hot. I, um, some of you may be screaming at us in the comments. You might be right. I, that's why I just think Daniel Radcliffe could show up as another Wolverine in this movie. I just think Wolverine Patch is going to be Edgerton because if you're casting an actor to play a, like a suave Goldfinger Wolverine it's with an Taren. eye patch, Taron Edgerton it's just fits Taren. that role a little bit better than Daniel Radcliffe does. But if you want a magical a boy who lived Wolverine, you know who your guy is. You guys know Daniel Radcliffe is like the heart, like the the like the sensitive heartthrob in a rom com where Taron's like. You know what Taryn is. Uh, and for that suave person- I'm a f boy, and I'll call back. Stop it, no, he's perfect. And in Madripoor, in that suit, I think he's bigger than Daniel Radcliffe too. That like that wingspan that Taryn has is like huge. Wingspan, is that what you call it when you're short? Yeah, I think so. Speaking of wingspan, wonderful board game. You can find the you digital like, expansion pack for the game. Oceanic version on the iPad version. I highly recommend it because Nectar's <laughs> quite the game changer. We should talk about one more person who said that I have had meetings and calls with Marvel uh, around 2019, and we never really knew what that was for, Keanu Reeves. Keanu oh, Reeves, oh, people yeah. wanted to play Wolverine, they want him to play anything in the MCU, Doctor Doom, Silver Surfer, but you just want to play Silver Surfer because of Point Break, we see you. But in this role, imagine Keanu Reeves, a Canadian actor, and again, we yeah. have a couple different pipelines. We've got a yeah. musical theater pipeline, and we have the Canada pipeline, and I think he could be cast as another version of Wolverine who would be recognizable right away and would blow everyone's mind. The bit that he would put in this movie too, if you guys can imagine it, is it would be a Wolverine that leans more John Wick than Wolverine. So it would literally just be Keanu Reeves in a suit, long hair, tired, and then go shing shing, mm -hmm. and I'd be like, yeah, I still get it. I still get it. Well, the one on Madripoor, isn't Patch technically a, uh, he's like a detective? Or well, he was like solving a murder on, in his Yeah, like, he was like book. doing like a recon mission in yeah. the Princess Bar. So that should be, jo Recently. that should be Keanu Reeves uh, as John Wick. I John Wick that. showing up in this would be, that would be so weird. <laughs> or it would be exactly what we need. Yeah. Because you gotta imagine, Keanu Reeves loves to do R-rated violence. That's and true. you could just put him into any sequence just in this shooting. movie. Just imagine a version of Wolverine who's raiding the TVA, the way John Wick has oh to raid some highly God. fortified compound. That's the version of Wolverine I want to see running through the halls of the TVA fighting Minuteman. Out of all of these though, if one had to if one had to prevail, I I I think I'm leaning the Terran more than I'd be leaning the 
De uh, the uh, Keanu Reeves, but Keanu Reeves would be so fun. I know he's Canadian. I don't think he's that close to Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, I just uh, I'm assuming obviously that there's a total of 18 men living in Canada and that they all know each other and that they're all famous movie stars and then that they're all on a text chain. All the Canadian actors, I always assume they are because Ryan Reynolds loves acting with other Canadians. Him and Sandra Bullock were like really good friends, so I was like, yeah. oh yeah, here they go. Uh, and then they do the song with Celine Dion. Ooh yeah, and then Drake's gonna show up in this movie too. <laughs> No, Talk shut about up. a lot of weight down there. <laughs> but is it real? That's gonna be next week on The Snake Peak. What if Drake is the magic poor person and they just put a wig over his cornrows? <laughs> How was he sitting? Was his legs completely open? Was he doing this? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, we're gonna talk about another dimension of cameos that could appear in this movie using this kind of thought experiment. But first we wanna give you a sneak peek at this week on New Rockstars. Let's talk about this past week. It's been such an insanely busy week. We just worked a six day mm -hmm. work week starting with Super Bowl Sunday. And like, it's one of the biggest weeks we've ever had on the channel that we've had three videos trend on YouTube. I don't think we've ever had three videos on YouTube trend. So thank you to all of you. And just really thank you to Deadpool for being such a popular movie Deadpool. for us to be able to jump on that. Today's video is sponsored by Blue Chew. And look, I'm neither suave enough nor gross enough to talk about sex comfortably, but you know, things change as you age. And if you want to turn back the clock to a more energetic time in your life, bluechew.com can help. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night. That way you can plan ahead or be ready for whenever an opportunity arises. It's super easy to do. Just sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. It's all done online. That means no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. If you're skeptical or you don't think you'll need it, try it free for a month and see. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. We've got a special deal for our audience. Try Blue Chew free when you use our promo code NEWROCKSTARS at checkout. Just pay $5 in shipping. That's bluechew.com. Promo code NEWROCKSTARS to receive your first month free, just $5 in shipping. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information and we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring our channel. Uh, you released some really fun videos. You did a, a breakdown of the Twister trailer. Mm -hmm. You and Brandon covered the Wicked trailer. Mm -hmm. I love that. Uh, a Godzilla x -Con Oh yeah, trailer. I just did. Yeah, that one came out a couple of days ago. That movie looks a lot of fun. That movie is so fun. Um, I make a lot of jokes that it's a, a bisexual movie <laughs> because of the colors. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with that? Be, no, I just make a lot of jokes and I think people are like, it's not a bisexual Godzilla. And I'm like, okay, well, we don't know yet. We don't know. Have, has anyone we don't asked? know. Is he gonna kiss? Don't ask. Is it gonna kiss Shimu? That's also technically a girl. Well, either way, because the Warner Brothers logo shows up with the bisexual colors. And I'm like, oh yeah. Woo, me too. Um, and so, I, but it was very fun. I'm so excited for this movie. I love the Godzilla and Kong movie so much. I have a Mothra tattoo that I kind of show off in the video. I love that world. I love the MonsterVerse, and it's it's so insane. The the fights are so insane in that trailer. <laughs> it looks yeah. He does. He grabs he, a chunk of the building. And I I like stood on that scene for so long. I was like, this thing wraps. Look at how big it is. It whips its skull whip around a building in Rio, rips it in half, and throws it. And that's when I went. This thing just. How many people were in that building? <laughs> how many people just died? Just looked at the whip come at their window and just went. This is where I go. This is my life now, but what a way to die. I mean, if I could choose. <laughs> a giant orangutan throwing mm -hmm. you across Rio? I wouldn't say no. Mm. Hey, uh, we should announce here that we are doing our next rewatch series, and it's going to be a MonsterVerse rewatch series, mm. starting with a video coming out in the days ahead, your breakdown of 2014's Godzilla. Yeah, Gareth Edwards' Godzilla. Uh, we were talking about it in the in here before you got here and Dashiell doesn't like that movie. Um, I love the 2014 Godzilla, but that's what got me on track when I was like younger. I was like, damn, I'm gonna rewatch every Godzilla movie I can find. And then I realized I was like, there's so many. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. It's but, one of the hugest franchises in cinema history. But. It is, it's deep, but it's so much fun. If you like big giant monsters, battles, super powered beings, a little bit of too many humans, but they recognize there's too many humans, so they start killing them. You should tune in. And you get to see Aaron Taylor Johnson and Elizabeth Olsen Stop. <laughs> making out. 
Stop. And it's a little weird because it came out the same year as uh, the post credit scene of the Falcon or Winter Soldier, Captain America Winter Soldier, where they're siblings. You're deterring them from the video. Or maybe you're. I'm bringing in a them. whole new demo. I don't and you're want that be demo. I don't want. If you are here to watch that, don't watch my video. <laughs> that demo made Game of Thrones a hit on oh, HBO. Oh, God. What are you about? Ew. Ugh, ugh, Jamie. God, I hate it. That show normalized incest and we all just kind of looked the other way and got into it. Yeah, dude. It was wrong then and it's wrong Y'all, some of y'all were fighting. You died on that hill of like- Oh yeah, people would, anytime I made crazy. fun of it in House of the Dragon coverage, I'm like, yeah, incest, right? And people were like, well, you know, historically incest. I'm like, no, 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 we are not having this conversation that incest is okay. It was not okay. <laughs> no, it's, there's so many other fish in the sea. <laughs> There's so many other fish. So many others. Not for Cersei. I understand that historically, yeah, princes and princesses were hooked up in a, these creepy arranged marriages, but it wasn't okay Yeah, then. it wasn't okay. And it caused a lot of genetic disorders and like also just problems that could have been, you know, it perpetuated a monarchy, which I think we can all agree is some kind of natural sin. <laughs> right, people aren't gods. People Stop. don't have divine right to rule over each other. What are we talking about? No, you're about? not wrong. You're not wrong. Um, Do you think when uh, the cancer gets Charles finally, William will keep that part of the ceremony of like, oh, let's bring up this creepy gold curtain so that God can give me a little kiss and no one will look. <laughs> People are like, Eric's an atheist. I'm not an atheist. I just believe in a separation of church and state. And I think that's Where did weird. this video go? I'm sorry. We should <laughs> get back to Marvel stuff. Where did this video stuff. go? Um, I agree. <laughs> I'm not forcing you to agree, by the I way. I agree. I'm sorry. I know you love the monarchy. And no, you think democracy no. is a broken Stop. system. <laughs> Um, the uh, other video coming out this week is a Deadpool 2016 breakdown. It's part of our X-Men Snick Snick rewatch. And I'm super excited for you guys to see this. Uh, we go back to the 2016 film, which has a lot of like uh, world building with like Deadpool's character. They establish a lot of things that are now true to the MCU yeah. by Deadpool coming into the MCU. They fight on a helicarrier in that movie, which is just fascinating because at the time it was not really linked with the MCU, but they had like, MCU elements in there. And it's almost like Ryan Reynolds knew that someday he's gonna get the call from Kevin Feige. Come on in, kid. Uh, so uh, I also wanna shout out our writer, Gina Ippolito, who's been working so hard on all of these X-Men uh, rewatches. There's, um, uh, like, she does a ton of research. There have been other members of the New Rockstar's uh, writing team who have been helping out with the research as well, but it's mostly been, like, Gina's hard work that have made those videos so well-researched and just really well-written. So thank you, Gina, and she's working on hard on this Deadpool one as well. Uh, so give it a watch. I think you'll really like it. Uh, we'll have some other videos coming out mm -hmm. this week. We don't know them yet. We don't know yet. We don't know yet. We don't know yet. Oh, no, we got Avatar. Oh, Avatar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The last so that's coming um, this week. Oh, and Bad Batch. Yeah, Bad we're going to be God breaking damn. down the first three episodes of Bad Batch. Shit, I know what we're doing. But the thing is with Avatar yeah. is um, it might take you some time to watch it. But that will be coming out as soon as Jessica can uh, finish watching the show and writing it. Yeah, you know, it it's down. Netflix, y'all. You know, it's. I'm going to binge watch it, but it's gonna. I, I, I got to sleep. I got to go to bed at some time. So it might take a couple extra days. But it'll be great. It's going to be excited. great. It's, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so subscribe to New Rockstars. Let's talk about uh, some other cameos that could appear in this movie. Mm -hmm. um, using this logic that Ryan Reynolds just thought it was hilarious that they put John Krasinski in Multiverse of Madness to kill him off. Um, do we think there's other Elseworld actors who got um. pruned to this void as like forgotten casting what ifs? And that's going to be the joke of it. Like, hey, you thought that they were actually serious about putting this person in the movie, but actually that timeline got pruned and that's why we never saw it. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I think a scene across <coughs> the poker table from Patch could be Channing Tatum Gambit. What do you think the likelihood is that Channing Tatum shows up in that this? That cameo would be amazing. I think it would be very fun. I don't think they, well, because it's a different universe, right, that we're seeing Patch in. So I guess it could be Gambit. I was more so thinking that like, yeah, it would be quick. It would be like a, he lost at that table, gets up and walks away. Mm -hmm. It would be very quick, but I think people would be very excited to see. I think Channing Tatum also really wants to be Gambit again. So. I think, yeah, he never really had his shot. Like that was <coughs> in development, that, that Channing Tatum solo Gambit movie. Do you think in the X-Men 97 trailer, the team up, the highlight of that trailer, when uh, Gambit jumps on Wolverine's back, charges up his claws, 
Was that a tease by Marvel Studios to get ready for a live action Gambit Wolverine team up? In it's this gonna movie? be no, because I feel like if that scene happens in Deadpool, it's gonna be Deadpool jumping on Wolverine's back. We saw that, right? Wasn't yeah. that in like set photos? Like he's like, let me jump on your back. You let Gambit jump on your back. I want to ride. That's so funny. My turn. Um, okay, we talked about Chris Evans. Chris Evans showed up in Free Guy. I feel like he's on the short list of people who could show up in this movie, but. Would Chris Evans show up as Winter Soldier in this movie? Or if he does show up, is it almost certain he would show up as Johnny Storm from the 2005? Oh, God. Johnny Storm, because he's, he loves making fun of people. But I don't think Chris Evans is coming back. No. That would be too much for Marvel. I feel Too much for Marvel in a way of, like, the fans would be like, oh, God! And he'd be like, I don't want this to deter from my movie. <laughs> Chris Evans showing up. Yeah, I, perhaps. You're right. Like, I think the one thing that makes it likelier is that they've now announced their new... Fantastic Four. Yeah, and so that's what I think is going to happen. So it wouldn't like make people think like, oh, is Chris Evans coming yeah. back to do it? Because we already know that uh, Joseph Quinn is going to do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why I'm like, I think it'd just be the fun, like a funny bit. Like even Chris Evans dressed up as like the Human Torch. It's Halloween for some reason. Mm -hmm. We get the like Wanda dressed up as her original Wanda outfit for Halloween. It'd be like a quick bit. Yeah, bring Chris Evans back in the MCU would be too big of a, too big of a showstopper. <laughs> well, what about Emily Blunt? Uh, who people wanted equally to play Sue Storm as they were hoping for John Krasinski to play Reed Richards. Again, I'm just going back to who is on uh, uh, Ryan Reynolds' contact list. The fact that Ryan Reynolds is working with John Krasinski on If, the imaginary Friends movie. Mm -hmm. Like, right, John Krasinski. Yeah, John Krasinski yeah. wrote it he or directed, directed it. Yeah. Or, yeah, and then Ryan Reynolds' voice is one of the characters in it. Um, yeah, yeah, he's yeah. the purple guy. He's the purple guy. <laughs> uh, so does that mean John Krasinski's wife, Emily Blunt, could show up as Sue Storm in The Void? I don't think she is. I'm really testing our imagination, I'll say, in this segment because... Yes, these are, I'm just trying to go with who are the craziest possibilities. Mm -hmm. This was a question that Zach asked us last night when we uh, did our live show. It's like, what are some crazy cameos? And like the conversation drifted. We didn't really get to what the possibilities are, but I really wanted to like try to answer that question of like, how far could this movie go? I think going as far as possible is possible. And I think, or plausible, I think as far as they would go would be like that Channing Tatum. I think we're going to do like those fan casting fan services that are like, funny to imagine, but also that Ryan Reynolds would have in his contacts. Mm. So that's why I'm like, Channing Tatum doesn't seem far, but it is really far and insane to put him in the movie when we know we're having X-Men 97 show mm. up and this is an X-Men movie. So I'm like, ooh, that'd be crazy. So I think it's people like that or the Taron Edgerton, but Emily Blunt, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I think it's either gonna have like just a, uh, a small number of people. I mean, they put Aaron Stanford Pyro in the trailer, which I feel like is like a tease for what they have in store. Isn't Electra supposed to be in it? Yeah, so uh, I think that was like the first high yeah. profile one. So, okay, that to me, that just clues us into what they're mm -hmm. capable of. Like they got Aaron Stanford who like, no one was really like expecting, um, mm -hmm. but they also have the ability to get Jennifer Gardner to yes. come back. So that just shows us their reach. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I think Emily Blunt is possible. Emily Blunt is just game for stuff. Um, and the last option I'm going to talk about is not Taylor Swift, though I did pitch to our live show audience that Taylor Swift, if she's in this, the, the best, the smartest way to have her cameo in the movie is to play some other variant, either Dazzler or like some other version of Deadpool, some other version of Wolverine, or, or just herself. And her cameo is she's alongside several other characters who just get very quickly killed off. In some kind of a spectacular fashion. That would be, because that way, that'll just shut up anyone who didn't want to see her in the movie. I think she'll do that song like Celine Dion did for the second Deadpool movie. She's singing Back to December or whatever, uh -huh. uh, like they did in the trailer. And they even throw Taylor Lautner in there because that song's about Taylor Lautner. And then he takes over the song and starts singing it to Taylor Lautner. Do we get a Taylor Lautner Wolverine? Only if Taylor Swift is in it. Okay. <laughs> only if Taylor Swift is in it. And if they, oh, I only also assume it would be a singing song one of Back to December because of the the like extra teaser they did where he's singing to Back to December. Like the last person we should talk about is the ultimate MCU fan cast that someone who they were going to start the MCU with, but they decided to go in another direction. Iron Man, before Robert Downey Jr. was booked for it, they were looking at Tom Cruise. Oh, oh, so does Tom oh, Cruise cameo in Deadpool? That three? would be that would be the crazy one. That would abs and the reason why it's crazy is because he would absolutely do it. Yeah, Tom Cruise would. is down. He's like, yeah, I'm on break for a second. Let me come over yeah. and then just like do his own stunts. Immediately die. It would be like Brad Pitt showing up in Deadpool three or Deadpool two. Right. The one hundred percent. I could see that. That's and he'd why. Be down. And that's why it's like the fact that Brad Pitt showed up in Deadpool yes. two. The only other actor who's in that vein, in the style of Brad Pitt, would be Tom Cruise. They're from that same generation. They're the same kind of like 
like guys in their 50s slash 60s who are beloved Hollywood stars who would yeah. just come in to play a very memorable yeah. cameo. Uh, and I think uh, the fact that he showed up in Tropic Thunder just shows you what type of performer Tom Cruise considers himself to be. And I think, yeah, just for that alone, it's possible that he could show up in this movie. We have nothing telling us that no, he is. There is no, there is no lineage other than what you said about him almost playing Iron Man that would connect him here. But he's game for things. Yeah. And he would, it's like almost grabbing Ben Stiller. Like they're both game for things. Yeah. I just don't know how they got Bill Murray for Quantumania. I'll never understand how that happened. Someone must have been close with him. Yeah, someone's Someone, kid was friends And he was like, yeah, kids. sure. Yeah. Mads Mikkelsen does stuff just because his kids were like, please go do something like this. And he's yeah. like, yeah, I just did it because my child really wants me to be in a Rihanna music video. <laughs> uh, well, we'll leave it there, but we're gonna be talking about Deadpool 3 and all this stuff uh, in the days and weeks and months ahead. Uh, before we go, we just wanna point out a lot of you have been seeing Jessica a lot more on the New Rockstars channel. Uh, yeah, she's back. She's our senior producer right now, but that doesn't mean that like you're not gonna see her pop up in other places on the internet, like Dropout just showed their new trailer yeah. for I'm um, Actually new season where if he is hosting and I saw you pop up in that trailer that looks really fun I'm very excited for that but not as much as I'm excited to be back here <laughs> yeah so you will see me a lot more and We're... I will be producing yes something oh, oh yeah. well, I produce my own things a lot <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're excited to have you back uh, <coughs> and thank you all for watching this week's episode of the sneak peek uh, and thank you for showing us all this love from the past week at New Rockstars it was probably the best week we've had in a long long time that well is filled the, yep. it, the water is overflowing in that well. Marvel yep. said, hey, here's one week, three things. And then Sony said, oh, shit, here's also this. And then Warner Brothers and Universal are like, here's three more trailers. <laughs> yep. We are full right now. We're full. We need to, still eating, though. Still, still eating, eating. Though. I still got room for a slice of pie. But oh. we want to thank you again for watching. Follow Jessica at Lulu underscore Clemens. You can follow me at EA Voss. Subscribe to the New Rockstars 3 channels. And grab some merch from NerdRiot.shop, our new break room line. We have a, I would be wearing our Deadpool Tools. Multiverse Tours shirt, but I soaked through that with sweat from last night's show. So it doesn't smell good, but it'll smell good when you unwrap it and put it on you. Oh, it's the sweaty one? I don't know what I'm saying. I don't. <laughs> I make it sound like I'm going to send my sweaty shirts out I mean, out I would auction it off. You might make like a lot of money. I think I just found a new career. Mm. Goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See ya. I have to stop that thought. <laughs>